Funding for this program is brought to you in part by Crowning Touch Senior Moving Services. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Rose Martin here with our favorite life coach, Susan Harp, and this is real life, a time when Susan gives us tips and strategies for how to negotiate those tricky parts of life that sometimes trip us up. Like you, I can't wait to hear what she's thinking about today. Hi, Susan. Hi, Rose. I'm so happy to be with you today and you. And today, what we're going to do is read a, a letter that we received from a viewer. Oh, wonderful. Yes, and I love getting these emails. And, uh, and, and I want people to know that they can email me anytime here at the station and uh, we, can, we can answer your, your questions on the air. So here's a letter from this viewer. Dear Susan, my adult daughter and her family live only 45 minutes away, but I hardly ever see them. I talk to my granddaughters on the phone, but I'm hardly ever invited over. The problem is my son-in-law. He is very disrespectful and makes me feel very uncomfortable. It's obvious he doesn't want me there. I don't want to put my daughter in the middle. I miss my grandchildren terribly. Ooh, this one's going to be tricky, huh? You know, I, I, the first thing I want to say to you, the viewer, is I, I'm so sorry that that's happened to you. I'm so sorry that that's happening in your life. And that's got to be very, very tough. It's tough to be estranged from your family. It's, it's tough not to see your daughter as a result and, and not to see your grandchildren. Um, I feel it right here. I, uh, I'm very, very sorry that that's happening. And I hope that uh, what we talk about can help. One of the things that happens when, uh, when our children marry is that we kind of feel like um, you know, we've been entered into a new relationship that wasn't necessarily our choice, and it works out wonderfully when, when it would have been our choice, and, and, and we're as in love with the person as, as our child is, but sometimes, in this case, it's not. And, and it sounds like what this woman is saying is there are things that this son-in-law is doing to specifically make her unhappy and uncomfortable when she's there. Um, now there's some things we don't know. We don't know if she's invited and she doesn't go. She says that, that she's not invited very often. She's hardly uh, invited. Um, we don't know what exactly he's doing to make her uncomfortable. But here's what we do know. What we know is that when we are uncomfortable, our first reaction, our normal reaction is to retreat. When we are in any relationship that is not going well, our reaction is don't do that. You know, if, if, yeah. you know when the doctor says if, mm -hmm. if you go like this and, and it hurts, don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, we avoid, most people avoid people who make us uncomfortable. In this case, it's her daughter's husband. And Again, we don't know the situation. Maybe, maybe she liked him at one point. Maybe she doesn't now. Maybe she never liked him. Um, one of the things that I, that I find to be true is people also are, taking, are watching us, and they're taking our cues from how we behave. So for instance, let's just say, in this case, she didn't really like the son-in-law when, when the daughter was dating him. Mm -hmm. That can set up a whole series of actions and reactions forevermore. Yeah, and we, you know what, what? Maybe she was really overbearing. And, you know, he's like, enough. You know, enough of your mom or enough of your exactly. dad, whoever that person is. Exactly. Let's create some boundaries. Exactly. And that's what I'm referring to when I say if, if maybe she didn't like him from the get-go and mm -hmm. she let him know that. Um, I know of other situations where the parents didn't approve because the child's uh, choice was somebody who wasn't the same religion or was uh, older than the parents wanted or younger than the parents wanted or didn't come from the same uh, environment that the parents thought that he should come from. All of those things had an impact on, on the, um, the, the choice mm -hmm. of, the, of the adult child um, and the person thinking thoughts about, about his in-laws. 
And that could be at work here. We don't know. But when, let's just say there were things that came up from before. And let's say that's playing into now. The first thing that, that we need to tackle then is that, is the fact that um, I'm thinking of another situation where the, the, their, the adult child, the adult daughter married uh, a son, a son-in-law, who was not the same religion and the parents didn't like it. And the parents eventually got over it. And when they got over it, they said to her, okay, he's all right now. And they said to him, you're okay now. And they behaved toward him like he was okay now. But you know what he said to them? You didn't like me before, and I wasn't too happy about that, and I'm not so sure I like you now. Mm. So, and I can sympathize with him. The damage I, was already done. Exactly. The damage was done. Yeah. The damage was done, but it's not set in stone. So let's just say for a moment that that's the situation. Let's say, and I'm not saying to this viewer this is your situation, but I want to speak about this in generality so that we can help everybody and not just one. So, so let's say the situation is it wasn't good from the get-go, and you played a part in that. It's never too late. It's too late to rewrite history. It's never too late to determine the present and the future. Mm -hmm. Never. We always have the option to change how we behave. And let's say that person confronts us and they say, you weren't nice to me then. Oh, so now you accept me? And you can say to them, that was wrong. That was wrong of me. I was wrong. And I feel badly about that. I feel bad about that. And I want to change that now. The choice to bring, to leave the past in the past, and the choice to not bring the past into the now is always a choice. So I'm thinking, it, but is it maybe that person's perception? It might not even be valid. She may think, oh, I don't like the way they, they're treating me, and so I'm not going to go over. And maybe her perception is inaccurate that they don't realize they're doing anything wrong. And then my second part of the question is, so would she talk to her daughter, or would she address it with a son-in-law? Very good questions. So first of all, no, we don't know how the son really feels, the son-in-law really feels. We really don't know. And we need to ask some questions. And we don't need to ask the question of the daughter. Okay. And the reason, mm -hmm. the reason is because that is the easier route, believe me. I, I, if I were her, I would want to talk to my daughter. I wouldn't want to talk to him. But the reason she has to speak to both of them, if she's going to speak at all about it, is that if she speaks to the daughter and not him, he's going to believe, I would think, that she is circumventing him and going right to his spouse. And once again, he would be proving, um, you don't want to deal with me. Let's say he does feel the way you're saying. He doesn't, he doesn't really have those feelings that she thinks that he has. Um, I know of another situation, a client of mine, where the son-in-law, the, the family is very gregarious. They're very, they're loud, they're boisterous. They, they, when they eat, they take food from each other's plate. Everybody's moving, everybody's, everybody's doing everything at the dinner table. The daughter married a son-in-law son who comes from a different family. He's very quiet. He keeps to himself. He, he likes his in-laws very much. He likes the family very much. But he's not demonstrative and gregarious in the ways that his wife is and that his in-laws are. And for the longest time, my clients were the in-laws. For the longest time, my clients thought he was too quiet, didn't like them, didn't uh, want to be a part of the family. And I said to them, why don't you ask him? Why do, how do you feel about him? And they said, well, we like him, but we, we kind of don't really know him well because he's not giving us the opportunity to get to know him. And I said to them, it sounds to me like this is a safe situation where you don't feel like he's being anti. You don't feel like he's being negative toward you. He's just not really participating a lot. So how would you feel, I said to them, if you were to say to him while she's there, both of you, you know, sometimes we kind of feel like we're too much for you. In other words, take it on yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't blame him, blame you. Sometimes we feel like we're too much for you, are we? You can tell us the truth. Give him that opening, and that opening provided for him a way that he could speak to them about, you know what, when I first met you, I was kind of overwhelmed. I was kind of overwhelmed by all that goes on in this family and all the noise and, and kind of how you are. But now I know you, and, and I love you, but I'm not like you. 
And that conversation led to so much more understanding about him, about the way he felt about them. And once they knew that he really did love them and he really did feel comfortable with them, but he, he wasn't going to turn into them and turn into this you know, gregarious, loud sort of person, it was okay with everybody. So I do believe that there are times when the question needs to be raised, but not in a point the finger way. So for instance, one of the things that, um, that this mother-in-law could say while they are both present is, I love being with you. I want to be with you more. What could I do to make that happen? In other words, it's not saying, I don't like the way you treat me. You're not respectful of me. You don't want me here. Mm -hmm. Again, what if it's a situation where the person is just different than you? You're not used to being around somebody who is, let's say he's quiet. Let's say he doesn't laugh a lot. Let's say he's not gregarious. I don't know. But, but we do know that she feels uncomfortable. And one of the things that she's telling us is that she feels so uncomfortable when she's there that she chooses not to go. We don't know how often she's invited. Right. And even when you're not invited a lot, mm -hmm. I believe the onus is on you if you want something to change. And the exciting part about this subject to me is the option to behave well, kindly, nice, forward thinking is always an option, even when somebody is not giving that to you. But are you not saying for her to bully her way in and just show not up all, all the time and do whatever oh, no. she wants and insert her into their relationship? You're saying perhaps she needs to adjust her expectations and then be kind and be gentle and not automatically assume that she is the odd person out and that they don't want her there. Exactly. When we assume you know, what, you know what they say about that. What do they um, say? They say it makes sense out of you and me. Okay. So, <laughs> so when, when we assume, um, we're frequently wrong. Yes. And we assume based on our own set of parameters and our own, our own set of, of judgments. And that's not necessarily what the other person is thinking. So we need to find out. And like you said, what if she's overbearing? What if she inserts herself too much? And overbearing is also a judgment. What may be overbearing for me is not necessarily overbearing for you. So, but it might be overbearing. It might be for our viewer. Exactly. Yeah, so one. what we need to do is we do need to ask some questions. And I think that the difficulty is when we feel unwelcome, the, the, the natural reaction is to retreat. When we feel like we don't matter, the natural reaction is to stay away. So in this case, without being overbearing and without inserting yourself in a way that you know is not going to be received well, because you already have some information here about this, mm -hmm. this situation and how they, how they um, are reacting, you just need to find out why. And you need to find out, moreover, what can you do to change it? And remember that What's happened in the past, whether it happened when she was dating him and you weren't kind to him, or maybe you were, whenever, whatever has happened in the past, the past is right up until this second. The choice to behave differently is always an option. The second thing about behavior and, and what we're speaking about here is, let's say he isn't nice. Let's just say she's right. He's not a nice person. He's, he's nice to his wife, not so much to her. If you then treat him like he treats you, so if he ignores you, if you go over there and ignore him, you have made him your teacher. That's what you just did. You have made the person who you don't value the behavior of, you've made him your teacher. And that's, that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to be in charge of how we behave. And the choice to behave your, like yourself with someone who doesn't act like you is always a choice. So for instance, I have, and what I call that is acting out of your value system. So I have a value and my value is 
I get along with my relatives. That's my value. Just um, point blank, you get along with your relatives no matter what. It's, your, it's the rule and you live by that. Yeah. Okay. I also have a value that um, I get along with my neighbors. That's my value. I get along with my neighbors. Now, I haven't always had neighbors who I would want to be best friends with, but that's irrelevant. I get along with my neighbors. That's my value. I behave accordingly to my value. And no one is going to tell me what my value is, especially the person who doesn't treat me well. So Ooh, if that's good, because you saying him being the teacher, you're changing and altering your whole value system, and you're going against what you believe and what you hold dear because of the way you're reacting or choosing to behave for someone else. Exactly. And so you're giving yourself more options. When you behave out of your value system and you don't behave like the bully or the wrong person or the mean person or someone who treats you wrongly, when you treat the person, even them, the way you, your value suggests, you're not succumbing to making them your teacher. The other thing I want to say to this viewer in particular is when we don't feel welcome, we feel like somebody else is in charge. We feel like we don't have a lot of options. And what I want to say to you is you got a lot of options. So let's talk about what the options are. If you've come to the decision, let's say you try everything after you and I have talked, which we've talked today. After this, you try everything and it still doesn't work. That does not mean that you have to avoid your grandchildren or avoid your daughter. If he makes it clear, let's say he even says to you, I don't like you and I didn't before and I don't now. I don't, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But let's just say it does. You can still see your daughter. You can still see your grandchildren. And what if, if you were sitting with us in the studio right now, you may say to me, but Susan, that would be so uncomfortable. You're asking me to go over there and, and, and feel so uncomfortable the whole time I'm there. And my answer, my answer there is, yes, I am. Because you need to decide what you value more. Do you value, do you really miss your granddaughters so much that you just can't stand it? And if that's the case, and I have grandchildren, so I, I understand what that would be like if you can't see them. If you miss them so much, then I guess I am asking you to withstand treatment that you don't want in order to get what you want. So sometimes we have to make a choice. Sometimes we have to say, I'm really going to be uncomfortable in that situation. It's not one that I would choose every day. But I'm choosing it because I want to see my granddaughters. And I want to be with my daughter. And what we don't want to do, she already told us in the letter, she doesn't want to put her daughter in the middle. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to say, daughter, you choose me or him. Right. We don't want to do that. That's inappropriate. So what I, what I think we need to bring it to is what can we do to try and make things better? And I mean everything including sitting down with the two of them and saying, I really love being with you guys, and I love being with your children, and anything I can do to be with you more, I will do. If you want me to be quiet, I'll do it. If you want me to stop calling as much, I'll do it. If you want to have a set time when we get together, if that's better for you, I'll do it. If you want me to take the kids on my own, sure. Whatever you want, I'll do. I think it's the parent's responsibility to do whatever it takes to not only um, get along with your adult children, but in this case, to get what you want. Take responsibility to get what you want. You want to see your daughter. You want to see the grandchildren. You can do it. You know, what about her inviting them over to her house? She always talked about that she didn't feel welcome going over there. I wonder if she's extended that invitation the other way to say, come to dinner, come to my house for you know a visit. What would that be like? Rose, you're such a good life coach. <laughs> you're such a good life coach. Yes, invite them over. Yeah. And and you know, sometimes people say to me, if I've said this to a client, you be you be the one to extend the invitation. They say to me, Oh no, they're not gonna accept it. Do not do not set the stage before the play go, before the, the curtain goes up. Don't decide the reaction of someone else. It's not your purview. Make that overture. Yes, 
even if they've said no many times, you, they can still say yes now. Don't determine the past. Don't determine the future by the past. So absolutely invite them over. Even if they've said, it's a lot easier for you to come than for us to schlep everything with the kids and all of that. Um, that was then, maybe that's not now. Absolutely, or even if you feel, I guess what I'm saying too is, even if you feel uncomfortable about that, decide for yourself. When you wrote this letter to us, you were saying, my priority is not being met. I'm not seeing my granddaughters. I'm not seeing my daughter. Even if you don't want to see them, even if you don't want to see the, the son-in-law, if that's what you have to do in order to get what you want, then do it. Do I think you can? Absolutely. Can I, can, do I believe you can be uncomfortable for a couple of hours? Yes. Have we ever, think about something you don't like to do. I don't like to go to the dentist. Do I go? All the time. Right, right. You know, are we capable of, of being uncomfortable? Absolutely. And believe me when I say this, I am not wanting to sound trite. I feel for you. I'm so sorry that this is your situation. I would be so uncomfortable if this was my situation. And at the same time, do what you got to do. If what you really care about is seeing those granddaughters and seeing your daughter, you can be uncomfortable. I, b I believe you can. I have faith in you. I believe that you can. And what happens when we do that, when we don't treat the son-in-law like he's treating us, mm -hmm. things happen. Things change. People are capable of change. Even if you treated him not, not so nicely, he's capable of forgiving you. The choice to forgive him, the choice for him to forgive you, is always an option, always. The past does not need to be a predictor of the present and of the future. I think that's really an important point, and the, something that we haven't touched on yet is the impact, depending on the ages of those grandchildren, which we don't know, but that interaction or that um, tension in the house can have a really significant impact on them. And what kind of message do we really want to be sending to those grandchildren about loving families and creating relationships? Absolutely. And, you know, I have a lot of clients who are divorced who are raising children together and the grandparents are still in the mix. And, yes, you know, there's all kinds of feelings. I mean, you know, I have a client where the uh, son-in-law was not a good person and they were only hoping for the day when she left him and she did and yet they've got to deal with him on an ongoing basis and so well, I've coached them about how to do that and and one of the things that they need to do is to behave toward them behave toward him in a way that is cordial kind and is according to their value system you know, one of the things that's, a, that's a, a misconception is that we have to love everyone in order to treat them with respect. We don't. I, I've, mm -hmm. I've said to this client many times, you don't, have to, you don't have to love him and you don't have to like him. You don't like what he did to your daughter. I appreciate that. That does not mean that when he comes to pick up the children, you say, hi, how are you? How's your day going? What's happening? Well, because you're better than that, and you're going along with your value system, and you're showing that by modeling. And like you said earlier, it's not having the teacher be something that you don't agree with. So for so for this viewer, what are the what are the takeaways that we want to that we want to let people know, not only her but the others, about some really specific actionable steps to to improve upon this? One is behave according to your value system, not theirs. Two, don't suppose what his value system is. Have a conversation with the two of them. It can't get any worse. So I don't see any. Now, there are times when I say don't talk. Yeah, I'm them. thinking. Like, what, there what, are times. I'm saying in this situation, it can't get worse. I do think you can have a conversation, but keep it about you. The minute you start pointing the finger and saying, you're not nice to me. You don't treat me well. You don't want me over here. You make it clear. That's not the conversation I'm telling you to have. Take responsibility for your part. It's okay with me if you even take responsibility that, that isn't your role. If, if you think you've been so nice to him and you don't deserve it, that's okay if you still say to him, what can I do 
to make things better with the two of you. Don't point your finger at him, with the two of you. And the other thing that's very important to, to remember, and you just reminded me of this, Rose, thank you, is you're not better than her or him. It's not a matter of who's better. It's a matter of, I've got a goal. My goal is to be with my kids. My goal is to be with my grandchildren. That's what I'm here to do. So I want to have this conversation with you so that we can be in a better place. And thank you for inviting me over this time. And thank you. And, and by the way, if they haven't invited you over, have this conversation on the phone if that's what you need to do. But in other words, take, the take as much responsibility as you can, not point the finger, and then remember what your goal is. And if your goal is truly to be more involved with your grandchildren and more involved with your daughter, then make that your goal and make not the goal to avoid him because that goal is not gonna get you what you want. That's a great way to give advice to think about your choices, think about your goals, think about what it is you really want and to maintain your own value system. Susan, some more great advice. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we thank Susan Harf again for uh, sharing some tips and tricks for having us learn how we can go out and live our very best life. We appreciate you joining us and we'll see you next time. <laughs>